It's Friday. You know what that means. It's happy hour on Loud House Podcast Network. It's your pal McGee. And with me today, as always, is the lovely and talented Ms. Beth Simmons. Hopefully we'll be getting her on in one second. <laughs> yes, there she is. I am here. <laughs> I was trying to hide from everyone today. What's going on? Oh, geez. <laughs> you know, if that was only an option, but the show must go on. You know, yeah, yeah there's, and there's a lot <laughs> happening in the world that we have to talk about this week has been is pretty eventful. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you're a, a huge Red Hot Chili Peppers fan, but I have some exciting news coming up. I don't know if you wow. want to get to it right away. Well, I, I actually there is one concert that I just saw got rescheduled and um, they changed the lineup, which before I was already psyched for it to begin with. Yeah. But ministry is coming up to Phoenix. Mm -hmm. um, they were supposed to be coming up in October, but with things the way that they've been, they've rescheduled and pushed back the dates again. So uh -huh. right now, the tentative date is, I believe, April 19th in Phoenix, but they changed the lineup. Originally, mm -hmm. the other band, like the only other band that I knew that was going to be on the bill was Helmet, which I was yeah. stoked about. New York City band, you know, seen them a couple of times before they were big names, but now, now mm -hmm. they've added the Melvins and Corrosion of Conformity. Oh. So I am so stoked for that show. So yeah. that that's that might be that might be an impulse purchase for tickets <laughs> yeah, in the not I mean, too distant future. I'm a huge fan of the Melvins, so that should be a good show for sure. Yeah, and it's funny because uh, just in Facebook memories, their last show that they did that I can remember at the uh, at Club Congress, mm -hmm. the videos from that show, which was about five years ago, came up. And yeah. I was just like, oh, my God, I forgot how awesome this show was. So I, I love the Melvins. I've, I've loved them since the since the 90s. I know that I was a little late being they've been around since the 80s, but mm -hmm. and Corrosion of Conformity, I mean... Pepper Keenan, he's just a blast and a half. Oh, so yeah. I, I, I'm stoked. I, I, I hope that the cool part is, and I was explaining it to the boy, was that um, there's a couple of open dates in between shows. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, my brain starts going and I'm like, ooh, there's like three days between Albuquerque and Denver. Maybe, just maybe they'll do like a, a, a spot show at like Club Congress or the Rialto, or I'll even I'll even suffer going to the Rock to see Corrosion and Conformity or the Melvins. Yeah. You know? So it was one of those things where I was like, "Cool, like that'd be neat if they actually did that." It wouldn't stop me from still going up to Phoenix to see him again. Mm -hmm. So no, that'd be but great. I am interested in the uh, in the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh yes, so what's what's going so on with this? This this was pretty exciting, and I don't know if you can can you see my screen right now. The Red Hot yep. Chili Peppers announced their 2022 world tour. Even my friends that are not like big music heads are talking about it on Facebook, and I'm like, wow, my friend's a news person and is so serious, doesn't go to any concerts, but she was chatting about this online. I'm like, wow, she's even excited about. It it so <laughs> they'll be on tour next year and yeah it's, i mean i'm ready to go see them i'm ready to go out and go to more shows actually well here's here's something that you may have not caught but it mm -hmm. says that john fushanti is going to be back with the band for the first time in 15 years and isn't that something that you predicted on one of our shows i was pretty well, sure you did i mean he's he he goes through his phases where he says enough is enough and he goes and hides in a cave or whatever yeah. and then comes back mm -hmm. and so you know they've they've had multiple touring guitarists along the way um going as far back as like into like 92 i want to say yeah. um eric marshall was one of the first ones when fushanti just had his one of his breakdowns and and bolted mm -hmm. um you know which i get Mental health is a very important thing. Believe me, after yeah. the last year, mine is hanging on by a thread some days too. Um, but so- Especially it, for musicians with everything they go through, being on the road right. 24 seven, no sleep sometimes, you know. Plus, plus whatever self-abuse that 
comes with, yeah. you know, like the self-medicating um, to try and cope with whatever they're dealing with. And mm -hmm. I mean, Mike Patton from Faith No More, they just announced that they had to cancel the rest of their dates because Mike Patton just was not in a good headspace. And the band fully supported him and said, look, our front man is going through some shit. He's just yeah. not feeling himself and he needs time to get well. And so, you know, mm -hmm. sorry to all of you fans. We love you, but we can't do this without him. And yeah. we're not going to force him to, to put himself in that position, which I think is wonderful. It's, it's, I think that's sad. really great. Yeah. It's sad for us that, that don't get to see the show, but it doesn't mean that it won't happen further down the line. And it's you know. nice. It's nice that the booking agents and the managers were all, you know, saying yes to this and okay with it, you know? I mean, when you, I, I think we've got, we've finally gotten to a point in, in time where people recognize that, that your mental health is just as important as your physical health. Oh, yeah. And sometimes they, they very, they mesh very well in mm -hmm. terms of if you're in a good headspace you tend to be healthier. You tend to go out and be more physical and take care exactly. of yourself. Whereas when you start getting depressed, mm -hmm. you sit in a room and do your thing and you kind of hole up and you're not healthy. Yeah. So at this point, is it, is it more detrimental to cancel the, the, the remaining dates or to have your front man go through a complete and total mental breakdown possibly on stage, possibly yeah. harming himself or others. It's just not worth it. It's, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I personally think it's a, it's a great leap in the business yeah. that, you know, it's, it's too bad that more businesses, you know, any business from any level, mm -hmm. from, from ditch digger to rock star. It, they should it, all it, take that into account and mental absolutely. health days. I mean, I remember when I was young and going to school, my mom always said, if you ever need a mental health day, let me know and I'll let you cut class. And that's what it should be. You know, we should have these open talks in relationships, with their family members, friends, you know, employers so that they know if we're having a hard time, especially absolutely. after COVID. You it's know? This, this last year, I mean, I'll put it to you like this. You guys doing this, jumping and jumping in with both feet and starting mm -hmm. this podcast was a, a great help to, to me mm -hmm. mentally because everything that you guys have been going through for the last six, six seven months, eight months, yeah. I was going through before you guys did. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, you know, and, and that's why by the time you guys were in that position, I was like, come on, don't stop. Let's go. Let's do this. Yeah. And fired up because you guys still had that positive mental attitude going all right yeah. it's not where we're supposed to be but it's something to keep us busy yeah. and so by the time we get to here we're in a better place we're established a little bit better mm -hmm. and we already are seeing our focus I, I for six months you know the first mm -hmm. couple months was great yeah all right get to sit <laughs> home play video games watch movies all oh, they're putting first run movies like yeah. before they're even in theaters on tv great but by November, you're just like depressed. Mm -hmm. Like, what the hell am I doing? I want to get out. I want to go do. So it's th having stuff like this and thank God for, for the, as big a pain in the ass as it is. I love having Zoom and FaceTime oh, yeah. to be able because to talk with helps, friends back yeah, home. Yeah, it connected oh, us during this period of time. I mean, every Friday, all of my friends get together and we do a Zoom when we catch up. And actually, one of my good friends who uh, works here for 911 Dispatch, she's moving to New Mexico. And she's like, you're going to have to you know, bring me into the group on Fridays because I'm leaving and I want some sort of connection still to Tucson, you know? God bless her. That's That's a tough... Oh my job. gosh. I am. So, yeah, it is a tough job, but that's why she's taking a step back and pursuing her ultimate dream, which I'm so proud of her. She's actually going to Cloudcroft, New Mexico. They're buying two acres of land, starting a farm, and she wants to start up a yoga studio. And I thought, nice. you know, this is, this is my dream to one day go off grid, have well water and a farm. And, and then, you know, when I tell my friends that they're like, you understand, you're going to have to keep these things living because I can't seem to keep any plants alive <laughs> at my house. <laughs> but it, it's a dream of mine. It really is. One it's, day. Uh, 
it, it's you know it's great in theory and you know it's just there's certain things that i'm kind of like i think if i have wi-fi i'll be fine <laughs> yeah as long as i can still have contact with the outside world i just i, I can I, totally be okay with being off the grid i do have to wonder if you are off grid will amazon still deliver will jeff Bezos <laughs> find a way <laughs> Well, I mean, they were, they, didn't they use drones for a hot minute? They were, they were in drones, the drones. So, I mean, that was like the major metropolitan area. So I'm curious to know if they'd try. I mean, there was that one Amazon driver that apparently the freeway, I don't know if you saw the video, the freeway was, and all the traffic was stuck. Um, There's a major accident. So he decided to go off roading to get to his destination on time. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know what? That, that's because if he's sitting in one spot for five minutes, the GPS tracker that they shot into his ass is telling him that he's not working. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, you know, actually, it's funny because my niece took a job doing that back yeah. in New York. And I just want to get the dirt. Like, what do they really like? She's Because she's just like, I bring my lunch. Yeah. That way I don't, I can just sit and park and don't have to rush. I can just sit and take my time. She's like, I've, I've been packing my lunch every day. And I'm just like, yeah, that's okay for, you know, 21, 22 years old. Yeah. But I am far too old and cranky and angry to be told when I can go to the bathroom and when I can eat my food. And, and blah, if blah, you blah. can go to the bathroom. Right. That's <laughs> it. Because sorry, if I'm going to drop it, I'm dropping it like it's hot. It no, it's like, sorry, <laughs> don't forget your Coke bottle. That's what you're going to be doing on the road. <laughs> it, you know, it's that that's for for you know i mean at least with guys we can always just kind of pit stop on the side of the yeah. road but you know for certain things but it's just ridiculous and so yeah the complete antithesis of everything we just talked about in terms of promoting good mental health you have amazon oh, uh, yes. <laughs> and then there's but, that <laughs> yeah but well, no, you know um, go ahead I, I do think, though, I mean, OK, Amazon may not be the best with mental health, but um, Jeff Bezos' ex-wife is. She's donated to a lot of causes um, well, good dealing for with that. I mean, she's good donated more money than her ex-husband, which is very impressive. Yeah, that's not surprising. <laughs> that's not surprising at all. But getting back to the mental health of John Fushanti, I am stoked that he is going to be back with the peppers yep. um i always feel that they're at their best when they have that core um you know i just i think that there is a very special there's a special connection like i've like i like i say all the time when we mm -hmm. when i try and make points about bands a specific group of people in the right place at the right time makes magic oh yeah and, now, and i think this tour will be magical absolutely i'm, I'm I, I mean They've never disappointed. They've never disappointed since, you know, I, I remember seeing them in a club in, in the late eighties before, mm -hmm. before they really hit it big. Yeah. Um, I remember seeing them play like SU's block party, um, mm -hmm. which, which was probably one of their bigger shows at the time it's pre Lollapalooza stuff. And so mm -hmm. they're playing to a college campus, but it's, it's, it's funny because I have friends that will go to the, that will fight tooth and nail talking about the Hillel Slovak years, which is great stuff. That's uplift mofo party yeah. plan and all that. But something magical happened when John Fushanti joined the band mm -hmm. because, you know, those, those two or those first two or three albums he was on were just out of this world. They're my, you know, yeah. mother's milk and it was mother's milk um blood sugar sex magic and, oh that was good and then even californication was a good oh one. my favorite okay yeah you're right yeah it's <laughs> yeah, i mean californication is not high on my list but, because it's like, too I'm, it's too radio for you right <laughs> it's i'm i i was always i was always the punk rock like funky crazy chili peppers guy but that's yeah. again part of when i discovered them I was like 12 or 13 yeah. They're, you know, they're, they're doing behind the sun and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, me and my friends like yeah. that uplift mofo party plan was my first chili peppers yeah. experience. So, so you're not I'm dreaming, of, you're not dreaming of Californication. That's not what I, you want. <laughs> I have never dreamt of Californication. I've barely even been through California to dream of Californication. <sighs> 
you know, uh, since we're talking about California really quick, there's a point one of my friends made here in town. Uh, he said, isn't it weird that the only people who ever reiterate where they're originally from are people from New York, New Jersey, and California, <laughs> but no one else likes, and every time you meet someone, oh yeah, I'm, I'm such and such, I'm from New York, I'm such and such, I'm from California, and it's kind of true, I, I never noticed it till now, but I'll admit it, I'm guilty, I did, always did, say. Uh, <laughs> did it, did, does everybody know I'm from New York? I'm from New York, people, you know, not New York City. But I did live there. <laughs> and and by the by the way, since we are mentioning New York really quickly, by any chance, did you hear that Crossaway in New Jersey, they are actually rationing certain types of alcohol right now? Did you hear about that because of shortages? <laughs> no, but it doesn't surprise me in the slightest. <laughs> um, I'm guessing it's malt liquor, um, Hennessy. Um, I'm gonna think probably skinny girl margarita. Um, I'm just trying to think of like everything that the, well, the cast of Jersey Shore would drink. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they didn't say exactly. I, I didn't pursue it further at that point, but I thought to myself, hmm, does that mean we have to start stocking up again? I mean, because it, it was hilarious. The economist said they're stocking up on toilet paper and alcohol. And I guess that makes sense because you can trade with those two items. So absolutely. I mean, it's 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 one of those things that we like with toilet paper after last year, we still will go and like, as soon as we filled what, you know, like the alert five fighter system, which is mm -hmm. the backup toilet paper on the spindles, yeah. you know, then it's as soon as those are filled, it's like, all right, the next time we go grocery shopping, we buy another big yeah. 12 pack or whatever. Or you steal and, some from work if you're still working yeah, at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were lucky that we were lucky that, you know, the place where Terry's office is, the, the the landlord was just like, look, if you're really in desperate need, you know, take what I you need mean. and just leave a note and just whatever. Just say, hey, I needed to take two or three rolls of toilet paper. She's yeah. like, there's cases up in the thing. But luckily it didn't get too bad for us. Although- I mean I thought if there's a time I thought, gosh, you know, I think bidets are going to become a thing in the U.S. pretty soon, you know, if we miss <laughs> out on the toilet paper. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I do remember, I do remember a specific day coming home from the radio station at six o'clock in the morning. It was when I was doing the overnights and I was coming home and I stopped at three different grocery stores yeah. to try and buy toilet paper because you were down to one case at a time. So uh -huh. I stopped at three different places because not only did we need it for this house, but even like my ex's house needed toilet paper. And I'm like, well, you know, okay. I may not always like her, but my kids live there half the time. So if I, I got to get them some to help that them out. toilet paper. Yep. You know, exactly. It's, that's one of the things I'm glad I don't drink anymore because you know, rationing alcohol is not one of my concerns these days well and it's a good thing you don't drink anymore because if you did you might possibly do something like this which i'm about to show you <laughs> i can't wait so this happened earlier in the week a disgruntled pod fan went into a venue and you know we've all seen the music venues where one or two people get kicked out because something's going on, they're being belligerent in some way. Well, that's exactly what happened with this fan. And so they thought once he left, everything was gonna be okay. But instead <laughs> he decided to get revenge on the security guy in front who told him to leave. So he got his car and he actually hit the security guy. Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so there's the car, hit him first, then hit that area as you see right there. Jeez, I just, the, what happened to the to the bouncer? So the so at this point the bouncer he was bleeding a little bit on his head according to one of the witnesses. Um, I don't know if I can play the audio, but do you want me to try it? Go for it. Okay. Yeah, I'm not hearing any of it. You're not hearing it. No. Uh, well, it's I, you know what you got it because. You got to fiddle with the thing. Dino knows the trick. Even I don't remember the trick. Oh, but, you know, yeah. that's not that's not very Christian of a POD fan to be driving, driving his car into people. What the heck, man? Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, but you know, luckily, the bouncer is OK. He's alive. I don't good. know if he's pressing charges and who knows what happened with that guy. I, I mean, sure hope he did press charges. You know, yeah. I mean, it's 
it's one thing it's one thing to you know to to have a scuffle and lose you 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 suck it up you swallow your pride and you go mm-hmm. you live to fight another day but that's vehicular homicide that's attempted yeah. vehicular homicide right yeah there. yeah he, but here's the thing i understand that the pandemic was bad but like to that extent we're like i there's, people are getting a little nutty on the roads i'll admit but to that extent <laughs> There, there's, I mean, listen, I, I've, I've driven in New York city. Hey, by the way, did you know I lived in New York city? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> just, <laughs> again, we recycle jokes, kids. Yeah. Um, but like, so I've driven, you know, the, the Brooklyn Queens expressway during rush hour. I've, I've, you know, I've dealt with New Jersey drivers. I've lived in Arizona, I live in Arizona where I deal with Arizona drivers and even Sonoran drivers, which are the equivalent mm-hmm. of New Jersey drivers. <laughs> so it's like one of those things where I understand road rage. I am not a patient man in the car. Yeah. I have a very small tolerance for bullshit when it comes mm-hmm. to driving, but I still wouldn't drive my damn car into a, a person a or try to a person. Yeah. Like, you know, I've, I've definitely had my moments where I rolled down my window and yelled, I will run you off the road. You I just want to say it, it was great that the balancer had quick reflexes. I mean, he's right. so lucky that he did, you know, well, and especially from the angle that it looks like it hit, he would have been split in two because it looked yeah. like the guy came in at an angle and uh, like hit the corner of the building. Yep, so exactly. that dude would have been just impaled from every direction. So bad, but it yeah, bad. it's, it's, you know what, first of all, it's a POD show and I mm-hmm. actually like POD. There's nothing to get that bent out of shape for behave like a grown up, and you won't get treated like an asshole. Exactly. Well, you know, I think we're going to all have to behave when we see some concerts coming up or like Judas Priest. Are you going to the Judas Priest show by chance? I am not. I have, I've had the privilege of seeing them, saw them with, uh, saw them headline with uh, Black Label and uh, the, the current Thin Lizzy lineup opening up for them when they were stellar, but I'm kind of good. Yeah. Well, so Judas Priest, as we know, and let me pull up the date really quick. I have it in my calendar because everyone's been asking me. Uh, October 9th at Arizona Federal Theater, formerly Comerica Theater in Phoenix. Um, So if you're planning on going, you may still be able to get those seats, maybe decent tickets, you never know. Um, And with that show, you have to show either a negative COVID test or within 72, uh, is it 72 hours? No, it's 40, 24 or 36 hours. You'll have to double check that or a uh, vaccine card just to let you know. So be prepared to show something when you get to the door that day. Um, The other thing though, so Rob Halford was discussing the show in his life. And he said to a reporter that he's never had F you money. And, you know, (laughs) I can say there's Me either a, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a point, um, you know, my friend DC and I were talking about it. We we're saying, gosh, you know, it'd be cool if we had FU money, because if we did, we could buy a radio station. And I'm like, that would be great. But I'm surprised that Rob's never had FU money. He said that at the beginning of their career, they were struggling to make it. Uh, they still had their day jobs. He was still living with his parents. And then all of a sudden, um, when they put out their first album, they got a little bit more money, but they struggled all along. And he said the one time where he felt like he was close to a few money is when he paid off a house with 30 grand, 30 grand nice. to buy a house. Uh, I want to know, you, where do you buy a $30,000 house? I want that. You go to 1984. <laughs> That's what you go to. I'll, um, I'll, I'll get in my time machine right now. I mean, you know what the funny part is, is that right now, 30 grand would be FU money for me because yeah. I could, that's, you know, for, for the average American, that is a year's salary. Yeah. How pathetic is that? That that's how, that's where we are at life is that $30,000 would be able to give somebody a, a, a year, year off a or year. at least six mm-hmm. months, you mm-hmm. know, like it's, it's one of those things. If I get 30 grand, I at least know that I can, I can pick and choose what job I go to rather than having to go take a job that I either a will grow to hate, will end up killing me or make me miserable. So, you know, 
Well, you can always just take a job for fun. You could, you know, bartend for fun, do two days. <laughs> like I already, I already figured for myself, um, if I'm at that point, like all I need is $200 a week to survive. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? It, it, well, I mean, and for a single person that, that has a partner with a job. Yeah. I can believe that. Yeah. You know, um, it's, it, it was kind of funny because like, luckily we were all, we were all given more than, than what we normally would have during the pandemic, you know, for the first time in a long time, our government was actually taking care of us as a mm -hmm. collective yeah. and I just socked away money. So yeah. by the time we were getting down to the 250 a week or whatever Wait, it was. So you, you don't have 30 grand based on that? No, no yeah, I'm no. kidding. I'm kidding. I, I, I was, but you, you got to understand like how stoked I was to have like two grand in the savings account. It was like, whoa, I can't remember the yeah. last time I had two grand in the savings account. Like that's, that's kind of a sad state of affairs for the average American. Which uh, the average American, I mean, before the pandemic, couldn't didn't have enough in savings to pay a four hundred dollar bill, according yep. to things I read online, and also um, the fact that people are living paycheck to paycheck prior to the pandemic. But the problem now that we're facing is inflation. So even though yep. we have a savings, it's not going to go very far. And, and it's kind of funny because it's it's one of those things where it's we go, OK, we're fighting so hard to get the minimum wage raised. Yeah. OK, great. We finally got it. All right. We're good. And, and then, of course, you have all the cost of goods. Like, the cost of goods go up. Well, it's first of all, you're guilted as to why do you deserve that amount of money to serve yeah. to serve me fast food hamburgers. But at the same time, it's like okay, well, now that you've given me $11, you're going to really put the screws to me by raising the cost of meat to $7 a pound. Exactly. Well, because they, I mean, a lot of big corporations, they don't want to eat into their profits or the profits of those investors. And, and that's where it um, all lies. Yeah. That's, the, that's the thing, is people making free money off the, the sweat, blood, and tears of other people. Mm -hmm. That's the hard part. And I don't know, it's... I, I, again, for me, FU money is having a paid off car, having a paid off house and having enough money in the bank to not worry about whether or not Netflix is going to get shut off yeah. because you can't afford to pay the auto pay next, next month. Like it's, I, 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 I only have, I, I only have a certain level of, of, uh, sadness for people that have been able to make a career out of, out of what they love. Mm -hmm. and then complain that they never had a few money. Love yeah, you, Rob. I, honestly, you, I'm you're doing shocked. All right. After 50 years, you don't have, I mean, that's shocking to me because he's done so well for himself, you know, great tours, lots of great merch, uh, the albums that we continue to buy, the music that's featured in TV shows and movies. Like, I don't understand how that's possible. The music that's on radio stations, he gets a cut, you know, every time a radio station plays his music. Well, but it's also, you know? it's also, how do you live? Yeah. What, what is your, what is your lifestyle? Do you live within your means? Do you, mm -hmm. you know, I, like, I, I always tell the joke about like the kids asking if we ever hit the lottery, what kind of crazy car are you going to buy? And I'm like, there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with my car. Yeah. Like if my car dies, I'll buy a new car, but I'm not going to just spend money frivolously, you know, because there's, there's two kinds of people. There's the people that came from nothing that when they get something, they, they hold on to it with, with a death grip so that they never have to go without again. And there's the people that live, that live YOLO. Frivolously. And, and exactly. there's, there's a happy medium between both of them because, I mean, you can't hold on tight. Um, then it's, you know, if you just keep it in the bank, inflation's going to happen. You're not making money off your money. Um, but if you go crazy, well, that's not the right way to answer. The, the middle ground is investing properly. And it's hard. It's a hard thing. You have to work at it. You have to do research. It's a job in itself. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it definitely is. I mean, it, they're, they're a band that, yes, for the amount of time and effort that they've put in and the amount of music that they've created, they definitely should be further ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they should be at a point where, you know, Grandpa Rob should be able to sit in his rocking chair 
on a porch in England, sipping Earl Grey tea and, you know, petting his, his, you know, Persian cat or whatever. No, but he, at, he, wa- he wants to be in Phoenix, Arizona, where the, all the sun is. Come on. <laughs> well, you know what you... I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's, it's, it's that thing where, you know, like, obviously, you know, enjoy it. You should, you should enjoy some of it. It, it, it is nice to have a nice car. It is nice to have a nice house, mm-hmm. but you also need to know that if you made a million dollars, you don't spend a million dollars. Yeah, you know, you got to have at least half of it put away yeah. to cover your ass. Well, I think you know? I think you should live a humble life, even if you have a lot of money. You know, because yeah. you should be I, just planning for your future. And then I, I also understand the other theory because. You know, I was once married at one point to someone who uh, went to war several times, got deployed twice, once to Iraq, once to Afghanistan. And he had the mindset of live every day to the fullest because you don't know if you'll be here to spend the money tomorrow. And I get that too, you know, because there were times like he came close to not making it back. So I get it. And I, and I understand that too. It's, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, I like I've made the the comment plenty of times. I, I if I had known I was going to live this long, I would have I would have done differently. You know, I would have put money away. I would have you know possibly taken better care of my. Wait health. a minute! You didn't think you're going to be part of the 27 Club, did you? Oh, I thought I was going to be a rock star and dead by 27. Yeah, I thought I, but that didn't pan out. <laughs> <laughs> And then, I mean, but the other thing was, you know, I, my, my father passed at a very young age. I did not expect to to outlive him, you know, and it it, go figure I'm, I'm almost at a, at the 10 year mark now. So it's just one of those things where it's kind of like, it's, it's interesting to, to get to an age and realize, holy shit, I'm still going. (laughs) <laughs> and like for my family, the women in my family last forever. Like my great great grandmother, who uh, she lived until one o one or one o two, and that wow. was back in the day when like they had all these issues and the medical system wasn't great or advanced, and you know they, she lived on a farm and yeah, and then my grandmother lived to you know her late nineties. So yeah, the women in my family lived. A long time I have to plan <laughs> yeah it's that's that you know like <laughs> that that was my mom's side of the family my grandfather and most of his brothers lived well into their late 80s and early 90s and you know still most of them still had a full head of hair when they went so I'm I'm kind of I'm happy about that trait that's for sure yeah. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. <laughs> well, actually, okay, since we are mentioning here, I have to mention this. I was uh, looking at the, I don't, do you follow Sebastian Bach online on Twitter or any of the feeds? I do. He's, he's a hoot and a half to say the least. Did you see the recent photo of him flying to uh, a gig and he had his mask on that he has for sale at his gig tonight? He's like, you can buy merch like this at my gig. And I noticed that he's letting his hair go white. It wasn't blonde. Like no, he he's did. been he's been letting the the gray and the white go for a little while now. It's just yeah. it's just more noticeable than it has been in the past. Which I was actually very surprised by because I figured he does his own hair. I figured he dyed his own hair by now. Well, I mean, you know what? There's there's something to be said for you know growing old gracefully, so to speak. Yeah. Um, part of the reason why I don't just for men my beard is because I saw Kim Thale from Soundgarden and Mm -hmm. he had let his hair go white and his beard go white and changed out his his backwards baseball cap for a fedora and I was like all right you're growing old gracefully man like god bless you so if Kim Thale who's a who's one of my favorite rock stars can do it so can I I think certain people can definitely pull it off but when I look at Sebastian it's like I want you to keep that look because if you're growing older that means we're all growing older and we don't want to think about that right now we're 29 all of us right now it's it's one of those things where like i i i really like i love jimmy page just a little Mm -hmm. bit more when he stopped dying his hair actually with jimmy Um, jimmy is different i think he looks better as he ages it's weird same thing with like brian may brian may letting his hair go go white looks cool 
you know, because he still looks like Brian May. His hairstyle hasn't changed yes. in 45 years. Like he's still very much himself. He mm-hmm. just let his hair go white. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's one of those things where like, and I know it's a lot different for women than it is for guys. We can get away with it a little bit easier than, than you ladies can. But I mean, I've told Terry a thousand times, I'm like, I love you. I love your face. Mm-hmm. Please do not shoot it full of Botox. Please do yeah. not, you know, end up looking like Catherine Hellman in the movie Brazil. Like, or the Catwoman. I, I, who, who's the Catwoman that everyone talks yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. I, I know who you're talking about. But it's, <sighs> it's just one of those things where I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to get any younger looking either. I I'm content with the fact that I, this wait, is wait, the wait, face wait, that I've got. Wait, you have to take that back. If Jeff Bezos finds the uh, eternal youth, like he's trying to find, you know, then you'll, are you, you'll be able. <laughs> are you trying to get me to, to drop an F-bomb? I've been really working on being, you know, cleaner with my language just for you. <laughs> And you're getting me, like, if, if it comes up again, there's going to be an F-bomb with Jeff Bezos' name. Like, he's, he's like, we're going to have a list that's going to be in the corner that's going to just say things we don't say. Van Halen, <laughs> Wolfgang Van Halen, and now Jeff, Jeff Bezos, Bezos, you know, and Bitcoin. Thank God that's been gone for a while now. Um, well, because <laughs> yeah, Bitcoin's gone for a while because it's in the range that we don't want to spend money on it at this right. point. Right. I'll, I'll put it to you like this. Every time I'm going to do the old trick that I did with Terry when I couldn't hear her. <laughs> Every time you bring up Jeff Bezos, I'm going to just like a kid with Tourette's rattle off a useless piece of wrestling uh, Perfect. history. Perfect. Perfect. Okay? <laughs> I know how much you love him. That's why I have to bring him up every time. Did you know that in 1977, <sighs> Ric Flair was in a, in a plane crash and he still went on to win 16 World Heavyweight Championships? Actually, I had not known that. I did there not you know go. that. Wow, that's keep actually bringing up, really keep interesting. Bringing up Jeff Bezos well, Elon, <laughs> Elon, but Elon Musk, we got to talk about him. Did you hear he's back on the market? Not that the, anyone cares, but I had to say, so his, so is his, uh, well, I think she was, just, I don't know if she was ever a fiance, but Grimes, you know who Grimes is? She was, she got pretty uh, popular for her music during the pandemic. Okay. Do you, do you want to hear it? Are you curious? No, <laughs> not right this second. Cause we'll get booted. <laughs> we can't play it. And, <laughs> if you, the hard way. if you have a chance, go check out the one music video Grimes has that really I don't know why it got so big, but it did during the pandemic. It's pretty decent. Beth, Beth will post it in the comments after the show. Yes. I, if, if she doesn't do it ahead. Speaking of comments, do you have your phone? Can you check and see who's watching and who's who's commenting oh, yeah. right now? We'll, def- we'll definitely do that. But since we're talking about new music, before we check the comments, I want to tell yes. you, we got some new music rolling out. Any ideas on who? No, tell me. Okay. So... We've been talking about Guns N' Roses for a while, wondering, are they going to release a new album? Ooh. Well, they've said that 2023 looks like when they'll be doing it. But here's my problem with it. The song that they released is something that they recorded off of Chinese democracy. It just, it never made the album. So does that really count as new music? Um, To an extent. I mean, go back, go back into the late Mm nineties. Um, you know, post spaghetti incident, and all of a sudden, like, I, like they did, uh, they did a cover of "Sympathy for the Devil," which ended up on the soundtrack of, um, I think it was "Interview with the Vampire." They had another, they had another um, track that they ended up putting on. Oh, what was the end of days? The mm-hmm. Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, and a lot of it seemed like it was leftovers yeah. and stuff like that, but. At the same time, like, all right, put some stuff out, put some teasers and maybe, I mean, there's part of it, like, I know there was a lot of uproar about the last single that they just put out a couple months ago. Uh, it actually, were like, in eh. August, in August, absurd. Yeah, oh, was that it was that, the first that one. recently? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and, and it was one of those things. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm not wearing my glasses, so I can't see so everything. They had supposedly reworked that unreleased really song that was from Chinese Democracy. I almost wonder if they're just using everything that they didn't use on Chinese Democracy and saying they reworked it and then throwing it together for an album. Well, I mean, there's always the possibility and there's always the possibility that it's true. 
I mean, think about how many bands end up releasing, you know, demo tracks or yeah. reworked music. I mean, shit, even the Beatles did that back in the 90s. They did the song that, that John had done the track for and they just they, they mm -hmm. just re-recorded the music over it and released yeah. it as a single. And that was their first single in like 20 years, yep. you know, as the Beatles, you know, so it's anything's so, possible. And I, I'm, I'd be willing to give it a shot. Yeah. So here's the song, the new song. It's hard school. I can't play it as you guys know, <laughs> because we don't want to get booted off, but look up hard school by GNR. I'll post it on Facebook after in the Absolutely. comment section. Um, if you're curious, but, but you know, they're not the only ones that are releasing new music. Deep Purple's actually doing a covers album. Did you hear about that? That's kind of cool. I know that they've been, I, I know that um, Ian Gillen has been back with them for a while. I mean, it's, it's a little bittersweet with, with Deep Purple because, you know, especially once John Lord passed away, mm -hmm. he was the backbone of yeah. that band like he and Ian Pacey were the only ones that never left Deep Purple they yeah. did other projects but they were always they were in every single lineup of Deep Purple up until John Lord passed away a couple of years ago um yep. so I mean I, again they they always have talented musicians in the lineup it's mm -hmm. just you know when you don't have the Richie Blackmores or the Roger Glovers it depends on who the lineup is is to piquing my interest, but so turning to crime is the brand new Deep Purple album coming out November twenty sixth. It will be a covers album, and let's see if there's anything you enjoy. Do you want to go through the track listing? Anything you see? So I'm I'm trying to see. So I see you're I'm going excited. up too far. I'm excited I see for of things. White Room. Do you see White Room? Yep. Yeah, and I, I see. I also see the shapes of things by the Yardbirds, which yep. was one of their big hits. Um, <laughs> oh well, by Fleetwood Mac. Okay, that's. A I'm good excited one. for that one. Yeah, and Dixie Chicken from Little Feet. Wow, they went eclectic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let the good times roll. That's going to be a fun one. You know that will be. Okay. So there you that's, have it. Yeah, that I mean, it's and the other thing is, is that you know if you really, the bands that take a cover song and make it their own, they always tend to do a really good job of it. If they mm -hmm. rework it to make it their own, yeah, you know, um, like bringing up the Red Hot Chili Peppers again, like they did a cover of the Ramones Havana Affair mm -hmm. that does not sound anything like the Ramones Havana Affair. Yeah. But it's the same melody. It's the same lyrics, word for word. And they did a great job on it and made it their own. They even did one, one that, that, that always makes the boy like chuckle because I love it and I always sing along with it. Mm -hmm. They did a cover of uh, uh, Teenager in Love. Ooh. And I loved it. It's just, it's, one, it's cute. It's a fun song. And it's one of those things that just, I, I always loved the oldies. That was thanks to Eileen. Mm -hmm. She always helped me with that, playing oldies in the car when we were little. Yeah. So, you know, all those songs are still have happy memories of mm -hmm. road trips to grandpa's house with them. So, you know. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the covers album idea. You know, even the Hollywood Vampires, which is Alice Cooper's band with Johnny Depp and Joe Perry of Aerosmith. I mean, they did their covers album and I, I loved it, you know, so. Oh, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I've like there was there was one day where um, I proceeded to type in you know, cover songs. And I, and what came up was awesome covers volumes one through a hundred. Mm -hmm. And there were 12 songs on each of these volumes. Yeah. And it took three days to download, but I ended up with 1200 cover songs. Oh my yes. gosh. Wow. That is you, quite a few. I talk about how epic my catalog is. It's the greatest radio station that nobody's ever heard. I'm not lying. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. So like hearing hearing bands like Anthrax, mm -hmm. Anthrax did an amazing covers album. They yeah. threw in like The Police. They threw in Thin Lizzy, which highlight of my week, Scott Gorham, the, the lead guitarist from the, from the original lineup of Thin Lizzy, liked a random post that McGee posted up 
saying that Thin Lizzy is one of the most underrated bands of all time, which I truly believe, and that Scott Gorham is a guitar hero. Listen yes. to those double solos. He and uh, Brian Robertson, holy shit. He and Gary mm. Moore going back to back trading those licks. So Scott Gorham, <laughs> we want you on the show. Yes. I would love to just gush over the Thin Lizzy catalog with you one day. I will be like a 12 year old Mark. Well, it's more than, (laughs) it's more than the catalog. We want to hear the stories. I mean, there's so many stories he has to share. I'll tell you what, I I mentioned it earlier when we were talking about Judas Priest, saw Thin Lizzy with the current lineup. And granted, I think it was kind of funny that it took, you know, three guys to replace Phil Linnett, but Mm -hmm. the lineup was amazing. They played fantastic. They, they personally, I said, they stole that show. Yeah. with Black Label and Judas Priest following them. I was like, holy shit. Wow, Thin that's Lizzie actually really great. surprising. Oh, they were they were amazing. If you closed your eyes, it felt real. Well, I mean, I love Thin Lizzy, but gosh, you know, that's such a great lineup across the board, Black Label and uh, oh, Judas yeah. Priest. I mean- And I mean, and, and by no means did any band not live up to their standard. Yeah. But it was just, for some reason, Thin Lizzy just, and it was in a small little theater in Rochester, New York. And I just was like blown away because I was like, wow. And really quickly, since what you did mention, they were on tour with Judas Priest. Side note, I didn't bring it up earlier, but when you go to the Judas Priest show in Phoenix, you're going to see a big bull on the stage. And a lot of people have been asking, is that representing the stock market? Are you being political like Roger Waters? And I love his answer, Rob Halford's answer. No, no, it represents where we came from. You know, the city where we grew up, they're into bulls and bull riding. That's why. But I almost wonder, because it makes more sense if it because it has red eyes. So I almost wonder if it represents the stock market and he's just trying to play it down. <laughs> well, and it's and it's kind of funny because, you know, like, I've, I've sat on the Merrill Lynch bull in wall street, you Mm -hmm. know, like I've, I've sat on that bull. I'm sure there's a picture of it somewhere, but I don't know where it would be. (laughs) But so, I mean, it's, it's kind of sad that just a bull being on stage, people read into it way more than what it should be. They really do. You know, I, I, well, I do think it's the red eyes on the bull. Maybe that's what it is because it really does look like the Merrill Lynch bull. That's what it is. But why didn't anybody (laughs) think that it was a malt liquor? ad like there was there was a malt oh, like liquor. a like a red bull or not uh well that's not malt well, liquor, and that too. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, know, that, that, that's kind of interesting that when you bring that up why hasn't red bull come out with their own like malt liquor red bull you know half alcohol well, because everyone mixes the red bull with you know vodka create red own. bull red bull is the malt liquor of soft drinks it's yeah. <laughs> It really is. It's, it's, I mean, granted, it's the it's the top of the line of the malt liquors of soft drinks because as you go further down into the bangs and other names that until they sponsor us, I'm not mentioning. So screw them. So um. <laughs> really quick though, uh, let's hit up some comments. Jeffrey Vanderslice is on saying hello, Loud House. Uh, his home was from uh, Lompoc, California. I've never heard of that city actually in California, but his home now is Tucson. Uh, Chrissy said, Mikey, you just said he's a hoot and half about Sebastian Bach. So you're definitely old now. (laughs) Is that Chrissy Frick? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chrissy Frick. Thank you for finally watching. That's my sister from another mister. Oh, right on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was the actually we almost brought her on one day, but she agreed that at the time she was feeling just a little too feisty to be on the show, but oh. talk about a hoot and a half, Chrissy Frick. Uh, that's she's, she's, she is a hoot and a half to say the least. I love your Fricky. Yeah. Who else we got watching? Well, that's about it right now, but you know what? That's commenting anyways, but okay. Um, so I was just thinking about this. What, what are you up to this weekend? I saw this really cool event online and I thought, Oh, it sounds like fun, but I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, I really don't have any plans. Like I've over the last weekend we saw, was it last weekend? We went and saw the Shang-Chi movie, which was outstanding. It okay. was very well done. 
Um, I, I, I have become a fan of Aquafina. Now that I know yeah. the name and the face together, I'm like, oh, that's who Aquafina is. Oh, I'm like, yeah. I love this chick. She's hysterical. Well, you heard people were trying to cancel her recently, right? Because they For don't what? like, well, the typical saying that she's pretending to be someone she's not. So they've been trying to cancel her and cancel culture world. But I think she's great and she needs to keep I, doing what she's doing. She was absolutely hysterical and and also a badass in that movie yeah. at the same time. Mm-hmm. It was a it was a lot of fun. And it's funny because um my friend Tracy Anthony and I we we totally nerd out to yeah. uh we have like a once a week phone call about Marvel, especially mm-hmm. when there's like a new movie or uh the series like what if it's been out. But yeah. she and I were talking about it and we're like oh my God, now that we know that both uh, the Aquafina's character there, Kate, Katie, and Mm -hmm. then, um, oh, the guy from uh, Ant-Man. Why am I drawing a blank on his name? Oh, yes, I I know Um, Ant-Man. Oh, gosh. And he was on- this girl, and then Mm -hmm. then he was talking to this guy, and he's like, yo, what's up, man? Like, that dude. We found out- You're talking about uh, something, Rudd, Paul Rudd. Right. No, no, no. Isn't his best Ant-Man? buddy that was his, that was his, uh, it was his uh, cellmate and now his oh. roommate and business partner, the Hispanic guy that, te- that like tells the stories in the movies. Oh, okay. We've been dying for like those of us that are true, like deep Marvel fans have said what, what would be the greatest thing is to give, to have him do recaps. Oh my God. So then this thing happened. And then this guy came out and like, he's a Spider-Man. He's a Spider-Man. And he even calls himself Spider-Man and just like recap like every phase yeah. of the Marvel universe, the way he does it and have mm-hmm. it. And now that he's in San Francisco and Aquafina's character live in San Francisco. Yeah. All we want is a sitcom with them in it. Just the two of them talking back and forth, telling the story because it's absolutely hysterical. Watch Shang Chi at the end. You will get what I'm talking about, and you will go. But Guy was right. Oh my nice. god, it would be perfect. It I will was, definitely have to check that priceless. out. And lots of cool, like bonus, like cut scenes in the in the in the credits for this one. That yeah. one where Terry and I just went, "Oh my god!" So go so check it out. Has it hit streaming yet? Because a lot of people aren't into going to the theaters right now. You can, they do have the premiere access for it where you mm-hmm. pay, I think it's 29 bucks and you then have it for yeah. the entirety of your subscription to Marvel or mm-hmm. to Disney. Yeah. Um, we did that with Black Widow, which I, I am very glad we did because then I got to watch it on the plane when I went back to Syracuse a couple mm-hmm. months ago. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely worth it, you know. Right on, and right on. And when you weigh out like, okay, 29 bucks to sit and watch it in my house and I can pause it when I want, I can rewatch it whenever I want. I can, I can eat whatever I want. I can watch it in my underwear, whatever the case Mm -hmm. may be. And then you weigh out, well, it's going to be 30 bucks for the tickets and another 25, 30 bucks for, you know, popcorn. You're saving saving money. You're coming out ahead. Right. It's, 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 it's a, it's a flip a coin. You know, yeah. So, but um, so tomorrow apparently there's the over the border festival at the Rito racetrack. I saw this and I'm like, oh, it sounds like fun. Tacos, tequila, beer, and live music with Get the Light Out headlining because it's nice. you know right now it's September. We're in September. So <laughs> every uh, month is a Zeppelin month for me. I mean, it know? does. It sounds like a fun festival. I was really seriously considering, you know. I almost worked, I can't remember what festival it was, but it was, and it was right after um, we shut the bar down. I almost worked a festival at, at the Rito uh, racetrack. And it was like a bunch of punk rock bands. And, oh, and, and that way, it, was, it was the same, well, it wasn't up to me. It was like, they did this thing where they, you know, they had a whole bunch of people show up yeah. and then they staffed it that day and said, well, sorry, you guys, we don't need you we've already got enough staff. So it was just Mm -hmm. kind of random and who showed up at the right time, who was there first, you know, they were like, you can stay and watch the show. And I was like, "Eh." but it it, it looked like it would have been fun to work, you know, but I didn't really have any interest in the bands that were on the bill. It would have been just like a thing, you know? 
So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I mean, it, it is a strange lineup though for this festival because it starts, I guess, I mean, people like us who <clears throat> love different types of music will be into it because it starts out with several DJs starting oh, out nice. the day. So that'll be good. And then it gets yeah. into the band aspect of it. Did you want me to tell you the lineup or no? Yeah, if you want to, go ahead. Are you curious? Okay. So let me pull up the, so you have Get the Let Out, Billy Shaw Jr. Band, Drew Cooper, Mariachi, Brooke Sample, and the Disco Wait, Barn. Mm-hmm. Metalachi or Mariachi? I said ma- Mariachi. Okay. Why? What do you think I said? Well, no, I was just making, I was just clarifying because there is a band a metal, called Metalachi. A Metalachi because yeah. they play uh, metal songs with like me- on their uh, instruments, like a mariachi. Yes. Thing. Okay. They, they play. I, they basically play mariachi music, uh, like with distortion and heavy metal Ooh. style. You they're they're a fun band. See, that would have been a, a really nice thing to put on the lineup. That would have been great. And then in the disco barn, they have DJ Sue, DJ Dibs, DJ MGM, Big Brother Beats, and uh, Rare and more. So, so you get a cool. quite a variety. Quite a variety there. Starts at three if tomorrow. If you're in your disco phase, you will enjoy yeah. it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everybody has a disco phase. I don't care whether you want to admit it or not. <laughs> I don't know. I, I really, know, I don't think I ever did. I never, I mean. Really? I, I guess maybe a little bit. Not much. Well, I, I've, I've talked about them and many people, especially, for example, Chrissy Frick. That's how yeah. I actually became friends with Chrissy Frick was through our mutual friends that were in a band called the Electric Chick Magnets back in Syracuse. They were a disco cover band. And it was a band that I goofed on before I knew them. I was like, oh, what, how stupid, blah, blah, blah. And then I saw them and I was like, they're friggin' fun. Mm -hmm. Like they put their hard rock edge because they were all into either, you know, hard rock or alt rock, whatever. So they put a nice little spin on it. And made yeah. it a lot of fun. And our friend Ed, who came on from Dracula Jones, at one point was their lead singer for, for oh, quite wow. a while. It was it was a good time. And let me tell you, they packed a house. Like they had a weekly standing gig every Saturday night and would pack a house every time. Hmm. So clearly, whatever they were doing, people were enjoying it. It was yeah. a lot of fun. That does, you know, I'm thinking to myself, margaritas and a little disco tomorrow. That sounds like a good time. Mm-hmm. There you go. And some yeah. tacos. And tacos. tacos baby. Why Yada. not? <laughs> yeah. Well, well do we I have think any that, other stories or did we cover I think everything that's already? It. We covered everything. It's been, you wow. know, quite an eventful day and it's time to get into our weekend together. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm I'm feeling like I'm having a big brother moment with you where I really want to kind of torture you for a little bit. And oh, I think I think I'm going to pick a good classic wrestling match next week. I'm going to give you my sign in to the WWE Network so uh-huh. that you can watch the match with me. We're not going to be able to present it to, to the audience. They'll have to, you know, go on and watch it themselves or find it themselves. And I'm going to have you sit through like a classic match and just make you suffer through it until you love it. As long as it's Hulk Hogan. <laughs> I, I like Hulk Hogan. He's cool, you know? Oh, I watched I a few of his matches as, uh, as a kid. I, I was thinking, well, do you know what? There, there we go. I, I will put up a list of like five matches mm-hmm. that I will let our audience pick which match I have you watch. And okay. I will put, I, will, I won't go classic 80s Hulk Hogan, but I will pick, I will put on the list Hulk Hogan versus The Rock at WrestleMania 18. Ooh, it was a humongous yeah. match. It was one of the biggest matches in the history of pro wrestling. And so that'll be on the list. I was also thinking Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker, the first one. I believe it was I did, WrestleMania I did, 25. You know, I watched one of The Undertaker's matches recently because uh, someone said, this one scared me as a kid. You have to watch. And I did. And it was okay. It didn't scare me at all. I'm like, oh, well, because of his entrance, I guess is supposedly scary. <laughs> well, his entrance has always been epic. Yeah. Like, I, I, like from day one, 
there, I, I still remember it because, you know, I was just old enough that I was what we call in the wrestling community, a smart mark in the sense that if I knew somebody from one promotion and then they went to another promotion and changed their name and their gimmick, whatever, I'd go, wait a minute. So when the Undertaker debuted in the WWF at the time, I had already known him from, from WCW mm-hmm. under a different name. Yeah. So it took me a minute to kind of really buy into the character mm-hmm. because three months earlier, I'm watching him and he's coming out with a black leather vest and black leather chaps. And his yeah. name is Mean Mark Callis. And mm-hmm. now all of a sudden he's coming out in this like in like a in like a suit jacket with tails and a mm-hmm. cravat and a hat as the under. Oh yeah, but his debut. You want to talk about scared kids? Mm -hmm. There were little kids in the audience that he scared the bejesus out of them, (sighs) and and I still remember. I will never forget Roddy Roddy Piper. Are you telling me? Are you telling me it's not like when Nightfall at Old Tucson would tell parents, "Is your child afraid of um, you know characters?" and the, the parent would say, yes, I'll, I'll buy one of those glow sticks for $2. They didn't give out the glow sticks to the kids that were afraid of the undertaker to tell them to even, avoid them. <laughs> I don't even know if, if, if glow sticks existed back then. And you got to remember, this is in the age of what we call kayfabe, which yeah. is it's all real. Yeah. That was the thing, even though they had these over the top, larger than life characters in the mm-hmm. early, in the late eighties, early nineties. They still made, they were still under the guise of it's real. Yeah. So, you know, but I just remembered them going, look at the size of that ham hock. And this dude just coming out, just stalking down the aisle. And his his entrance got progressively more theatric yeah. as time went on to a point where now all he has to do is the entrance. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to wrestle a match as long as he has the entrance. He can come in, choke slam somebody and walk out and the crowd would go banana. Mm -hmm. It would. So, yeah, so definitely. And that Shawn Michaels versus Undertaker match had one of the most epic entrances of all time because you had the good guy and the bad guy. The guy yeah. who is the born again Christian that we all know about, and you know, he descends from the heavens. Yeah. And then the bad guy who comes up from the bowels of hell. And it like even the entrances were epic for that. And then and then show. he yells at the little kid, scares the kid, and the parents like, that's why you clean your room. Because <laughs> he's gonna get you. <laughs> well, and it's funny you say that because unfortunately I had to kill Kayfabe with with the boy at a very early age, just so that he wouldn't hurt his sister or any of his friends oh. watching the show, where I had to tell him, they're, they, they're really not trying to hurt each other, buddy. It's, they're, they're, they're competing, but That's it's, for you know, fun. it's real, but they're not trying to hurt each other. Yeah. And, you know, had to make that point, you exactly. know, so it was, it was a weird dynamic, but I think I want to, I think I'm going to put up five matches and make you sit through one I, gar- I promise you, none of them will be longer than, than a half an hour. I'm not yep. going to make you sit through a 60-hour Broadway with Ric Flair and Ricky Steamboat. You're not mm-hmm. ready for that yet. Yes. So. <laughs> that, that sounds like a plan. One match next week. Yeah, absolutely. I'll get, I will turn Beth into a wrestling fan. Yes. That is my yes. goal. So. But with that, I do think it's our cue to go. My dog, okay. my cat, they're like, please, feed us, feed us. You know, they're just at that point. <laughs> Well, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, Keep up with the uh, follows and the likes, please. Help us share it with your friends. Uh, Pass around the YouTube page. We got some interesting new ideas coming in the not too distant future. So stick around and see what's going to be coming. We got some interesting things going to happen. Yeah. Beth, hit the tagline. Okay. How can you miss us if we never go away? Thanks, guys. Have a safe weekend.